Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna answer a great question here from a subscriber, someone who messaged me here on LinkedIn. Um, more or less, I'm gonna summarize this here for you guys. They are, they've already got their PhD, um, they pursued a career uh, in something such as mathematics or theoretical physics in the academic route. They've done that for some little bit of time here, maybe a few years, whatever, maybe five years in or something. Uh, and then they later decided to switch and they want to move over into quant finance on the industry side. Um, they have five questions. So let's fire these off real quick and I'll try to give you guys fairly short and concise answers. Um, number one is regarding the job search process. Are there any do's and don'ts that you recommend to such uh, ex-academics based on your experience? Um, the biggest struggle and hurdle you're going to face as an academic is often I find academics know one thing very, very well. They have one specific topic or interest, which is great. Um, but typically they have no idea how the real world works. And so when we interview those with have academic backgrounds, even those just graduating with PhDs, but specifically if you've been teaching for some time, um, the issue I'm going to have is that you go, oh, you know, I know one skill. Let's just say... Um, I don't know. Let's say the Box Jenkins approach for time series modeling, which I've used quite a bit throughout my career. But let's say you're an academic and you've done that. Um, basically, you're going to start, at least this is our view. Uh, we think that you like to frame things in one mindset and everything is that same problem here. So you've got a hammer and everything starts looking like a nail. Um, I've had this interesting discussion with academics and PhDs who've even not interested in coming over. But like, as I'm talking to them and explaining my work, they start to reframe all of my problems in their one framework. They cannot deviate out into a broad set of skills here. So for quant finance, researchers, model developers, validators, um, you need to be able to have a massive tool belt of tools. Um, I don't can't show you here. Let me show you. Uh, but over here, there's a bunch of textbooks I have. And all those textbooks uh, cover a wide range of topics from probability series to time series modeling, um, to machine learning, to categorizations, to data processing, to cleaning, to programming, to finance, financial theory. Um, when you have a PhD, you're going to fight that kind of stigma because there are so many academics that literally view everything through one lens here. So do not do things through one lens. Try to make your resume uh, show your kind of plethora of skills here. Uh, the second question is going to be, I am mostly applying to entry-level positions that require a PhD currently. Do you think this is a good idea to apply to summer internships given my previous experience? No, I would not apply to internships. I think it somewhat degrades your profile. Um, remember, you are a practitioner of some sorts, right? You can say you're an academic, but you've practiced that for I don't know, a handful of years here after your PhD. Um, I would view this as looking for like analyst and associate kind of roles here, roles that have maybe a year or two of experience, right? You're not really a fresh entry. You can try applying to those fresh new grad positions here if you want. Um, I would try to get in though a little bit in because if you apply to two junior roles, I'm gonna go, wow, this person's way overqualified, so I'm not gonna hire them even though I know I probably could bring you in for a much better salary than academia is paying you. Um, try to find the skill set levels. If you've got, you know, five years or less, try to look for positions that, you know, have like two years to three years, maybe four or five years, um, kind of, you know, experience level required, uh, and then build the resume around that, which we'll talk about here in a second with another question. But internships, I feel like, are too junior. It implies you have no experience. You have nothing really to offer. Uh, you're just kind of getting, you know, your feet wet. I would avoid it. I think it's kind of a negative, too, because it makes you start all the way at the beginning. And you do have some experience and value here. So you need to really market that. That's going to be your key piece, which we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, number three is going to be, you mentioned in one of your videos that people working on the buy side are different from those working on the sell side of quant finance cringe when people ask these questions, but I'll answer it. Uh, in which sense do you think they're different? Um, sell side, I find, is more structured, more academic-like, with, with an asterisk here. If there's an asterisk, give me a second. Um, the sell side, it has very strict processes and rules. Big firms are going to vary. Um, big banks follow Federal Reserve requirements, FRB, so Federal Reserve Board. Uh, they're going to have a very strict set of standards. If you go to Citibank, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, um, those big sorts of banks, Capital One, those sorts of ones, um, you can look to see what their regulatory requirements are. If they're FRB really, uh, regulated, so Federal Reserve, uh, they typically have very high strenuous standards. Again, there's been some degradation of like 
there's been some issues here. I'm not happy with the regulators. So dear Federal Reserve, I'm not happy with what you guys have done. You've lessened our requirements and a lot of these firms are creating garbage now. But when they have that, they at least have some sort of minimum requirement. They have actual model developers. They're at least attempting to build uh, academically structured, well-structured models here. Now, banks that are not Federal Reserve uh, or OCC often uh, regulated are gonna be FDIC. FDIC's problem is it ranges from like the world's smallest mom and pop shop credit union on the corner up to some decently sized regional banks. I find the quality and requirements of FDIC regulated banks to be quite poor. Um, they understand they're trying to be flexible and go, you're a small bank, you're not gonna hire a massive team of quants. But with that comes a very poor set of standards and regulations around model development. I would avoid them on the sell side. Now, the buy side is not, as structured, at least from what I have seen. Again, you're gonna see a similar pattern though. Large firms that are big quant funds, some of the big names, are gonna have structured processes and procedures. It'll be more academic, more rigorous. It's where you're going to fit better. Now, there could be some small mom and pop shop quant funds here where they're going to be small firms, not as well known. They might be very rigorous. However, I find typically on the buy side, people say, quantitative finance and it's like it can vary from someone just you know using excel and dragging and dropping cells and putting you know if this then that and summing things up and doing moving averages not quantitative not uh you know academic -y, not well supported i would try to Avoid those in interviews by asking more or less like what type of model frameworks do they use? What type of models do they use, right? You don't need details, but if they start telling you they're using logistic regression, they're using, I don't know, ARIMA, CEREMAX style models, OLS, uh, even machine learning methodologies, dig deep on machine learning because it is a big red flag for me of like everybody says machine learning and then a lot of people have really poor standards, but try to get an understanding of their academic rigor. If they are smart and academic, they're probably going to have good standards where you will fit in much better. Um, again, this the buy side, I just, I'm not a fan of it. It's, it's just distasteful, I feel like in many ways um, because there are such great firms on the buy side, but there are so many garbage firms it's hard to sort them. It's hard to know. Like people have asked me, Dietrich, can you make a list? I don't know, guys. I'm not on the inside of every single firm and I'd have to go out and find people. And like, it's just, it's not my area of expertise here. Buy side, I think it'd be great and fun. There'd be some really interesting problems. You have a lot more freedom to model and do things because you don't have all the regulation that the sell side, so the banks have. Um, but I'd be very cautious because many, many, the vast majority of everyone on the buy side I've ever talked to that was a quant, um, in my eyes, was not really doing a lot of quantitative work. So um, as an academic, I think you would fit more in truly quantitative positions um, versus like more or less business focus or computer science focus, like let's do moving average, no statistical testing, um, but it works. So we're doing it kind of mindset, which is a lot of the HFT side. So again, it's hard. There's so many firms, so many qualities across the board. Uh, try to ask those in interviews that will make you come off as much uh, more interesting, uh, but it will also help you kind of weed out which firms are going to be a good fit for you as an academic and which ones are not. Would you be willing to recommend one or two good recruiters who work with ex-academics? Of course, I fully understand if you say no. I, to be honest, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, I try to avoid working with recruiters as much as possible. When you're in the beginning of your career, you don't have a lot of choices because your network's not big enough. Um, work on your network, guys. Make it big enough. Get quality leads. Um, get contacts to give you recommendations for jobs for hiring. It makes it much easier and you can get an insight into the company culture. Uh, but with recruiters, I, I cringe with recruiters. They're only just trying to place you to make a dollar. I don't find many recruiters at all. There's maybe one or two out there, but I don't know. It's hard to find. They're not invested in you and the company. They're often like, can I get A to fit with B so that they'll pay me my commission? Um, there's not a lot of people that are really willing to put in the time into you, especially as an academic, and figure out how do you get you there. And there are crews I find that are willing to have you rewrite resumes. Um, I've had students send me them and said, hey, this, this uh, recruiter said to change all this and do this. And I'm like, Ugh. Uh, they're having you apply to business jobs and finance jobs and fake quant jobs because they're highlighting skills like presentation skills and derivative pricing. And they try to put on like these like, you know, stochastic calculus and they stamp all these stupid buzzwords on there and the resume is not good and meaningful. It's not highlighting your experience, your expertise. Um, so I'm not a big fan of recruiters. Um, just go out there and search them. They're a dime a dozen. Just find a bunch of them. Just collect them. 
Don't worry about hurting anyone's feelings. Just collect as many as possible. Be honest with them though. If you're already uh, using a recruiter for a specific company or specific job, don't let two recruiters represent you for the same role. So again, they'll probably give you enough information. You can kind of figure that out. Um, I wouldn't disclaim any of the, I would just use a bunch of recruiters and look for opportunities. Um, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of recruiters. I don't know any that are all stars that could place you as an ex-academic. Uh, any general advice for getting a first job for people in my situation? Um, the best advice I can give you here is going to be look for the jobs online, look for the skills they're looking for, and then don't mentally check in your head and say, yeah, I could do this. Um, make sure that you Take what's written on the job description, so must have skills doing this, 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 and this, and list them out onto the resume, okay? Um, part of this, too, is trying to show your dimensionalities, so don't be the one-skilled PhD or the one-skilled academic. Um, like, for example, if you've taught classes on specific topics, like, I get really excited. I almost hired a, a PhD um, professor, taught PhD uh, students, um, in psychology because they wrote a textbook on statistical analysis of psychology. And I was really excited to talk to them. And then they ghosted me. Um, but try to put those skills on there. So if you're teaching classes, put those sorts of things on there. I wanna know what you're teaching, uh, what you can talk about, what your interests are. Put your research on there so I can see, you know, what is your focus, which is good, that's fine. You'll show me that one focus. Um, but also then have your graduate degrees listed. So for quants, your graduate degree, that PhD that you actually earned is worth a lot. Uh, I need to know what classes you took, right? What were the core requirements? What math classes did you take? What statistics courses? did you take? Try to highlight a few of those variety skills here. So the various skills that you have um, around quantitative finance. And then again, read those job descriptions and try to tie those back into the resume here. So they also mentioned here, um, you know, at the beginning here, uh, they initially pursued an academic career in pure math and theoretical physics. Guys, I'm a quant. I do not do physics. So I get a lot of physicists that apply thinking like, I'm really smart. I'm a physicist. I don't work in physics. So when you guys list things off there, like, I don't know, you're an expert in like studying lensing. So light lensing, or how gravity bends light over planets and all that. I only know this because I talked to a guy that had a, a PhD in it like briefly. And of course he dumbed it way down so I could understand what he, what he was working on. Um, you have to show me how those things are related. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I, I just work in quant finance and my background is in finance and econo uh, econometrics and economics and those sorts of things. It's not in the physics world. I find physics interesting. Um, I would love to read more. So I'm, I have a few uh, books on my list, like one by Roger Penrose. Um, but again, and I have a whole set of books by Richard Feynman. I haven't had time to read them. Um, I just, I'm not a physicist. So you need to be able to boil those skills down into the core thing. So I understand, okay, um, you've done, you know, probability theory, you've done real analysis, some measure theory, you know, you've done calculus, you know, one to three and some ODEs and PDEs. And, you know, you did some research on statistical analysis of lensing or something. I don't know. Throw in your physics topic, but put what you use to analyze and skill and model. So I... Dumb, dumb old me um, in the quant space can figure out, okay, your skills are going to match and you're going to be a good hire here because that's what I'm looking for. So anyways, those are my tips and tricks. If you are an academic who's looking to switch over, uh, even if you're working at a PhD, many of these tips will apply to you as well. Um, if you found this video helpful, do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you want more content like this. And as always, until next time. Mm -hmm.